Dude, fat ass. This is what we get for the whole week? Whole week. Whole weekend, I guess it is. Five days in this thing. Look at this thing. Woo! What is up, MFers? Welcome back to uh, another exciting episode. I'm freaking jacked. I've been talking to you guys about this trip for a minute now, but I'm actually in Houston. Just landed in Houston, Texas at the airport. So you guys saw that's a, a badass rig that we're taking today. I'm somewhere I've wanted to come. I haven't been here in like four years and a lot has changed. I'm at the Six Sense Lures factory. This is just one of the buildings. You got this building over here. You got another building back there pretty freaking sweet so what I'm doing this trip actually is I've, I've told you guys a while back uh, there's like a handful of dudes to ten dudes in the entire country I want to fish with and it's not necessarily uh, or at all because they have a big following or a lot of subscribers on YouTube or something but I'm fishing with none other than the man the myth the legend Casey Sobzak who is one of the best sticks in Texas a lot of you guys might not know that uh, but the reason he doesn't fish a whole lot anymore is because this is his baby. He is the CEO, the owner, the creator, the founder, the everything of Six Sense Lures. So I get to fish with him finally. We, we've been friends for like four or five years. Finally get to fish together for like four or five straight days. This dude, uh, he, he didn't come from anything. He started this from the ground up and has grinded for 10 years to get to where it is. And dude, this place is like 100 times the size of when I was here four years ago. Pretty badass. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of walk around the factory, talk about how this dude got everything started, and uh, yeah, maybe show some some sneak peeks at some new stuff that's coming out. It's gonna be a good one. You guys wanna watch this? So this right here is where all the baits are and everything. Yeah, this is this is the pull and pack area. So this is where you know we get an order online, we come and we can pull any product, load it up in the box, get it shipped out. I thought my garage had more six and lures than anywhere in the, in the history of the world, but it turns out factory might have a couple more than I do like look at look at this stuff guys you got boxes and boxes and boxes you got clothing up there six cents apparel has gotten freaking huge it's a giant part of the company now because you guys have seen some of the awesome designs he's come out with hats you got a million hats like so many different types of different six cents hats those are all six cents hats up there this one's just like just your office last time I was here the office and then the separate room no no that was in here that was in there. You can't even tell, yeah. No, you can't. So let's go in there and check it out. Yeah. So, uh, this is where it started. So in uh, 2013, we built this first metal building. And, uh, and in 2013, we sold out of most of our product our first year in the mass production. So we didn't have any product to sell. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to figure out what to do. So we built this metal shell. We stored all our product on this left-hand side. And then basically I came in and I framed and built this all up in a course of six months. You did? I did all of it based on YouTube. My dad helped me frame it. And so we framed it and then I sheet rocked it. I did uh, a lot of the electrical. I did all the flooring. Uh, I did uh, pretty much everything you'll see in here from the concrete countertops to the installation of everything. All the tile, all the cabinetry. Um, so in six months I put it all together so we had an office that we could uh, work out of. And time it was just me and and uh, one other guy and so now we have uh, a lot more employees and it's gotten super crowded so you can see let's show this real quick we're getting ready to frame out more office space mm -hmm. so it's not as crowded so you've grown and up until like last year it was just you and like you'd have one or two other guys right correct so yeah. then this last year has really blown up a lot and how many how many people do you have working for you guys now now we have Wow, that's that's a lot, including within, me, including you. So that's a lot within the course of a couple of years. So how did you get into like making baits? Like what what was your passion? Like you came from a tournament fishing background. You you told me all your stories about the past, and I've seen all the tournaments you've won and everything, and the, the money and the boats and everything you've won as a tournament angler. How did you use that to to kind of transition into this? A lot of guys know that Casey started as a custom lure painter, and he's like the best lure painter that I've ever seen. But yeah, talk about how you kind of got started with that and and painting your own baits and everything else. Sure, so that's the number one question I get is how did I start Sixth Sense? So mm -hmm. I fished just like all these other guys in college and in high school. And in 2005, ESPN or JM Associates held the first ever collegiate bass tournament on ESPN2. Mm -hmm. And it was, so the first ever collegiate sanctioned event where they invited only six colleges. 
and it was some big name schools, Purdue, University of Iowa, University of Illinois, A&M, University of Kentucky, and then Stephen F. Austin where I went to school. Mm -hmm. Well, I qualified through our school to go fish this national championship. Well, I ended up catching like a seven pounder on the final day. Our team won the event and it went on ESPN2, it was a cool deal. Well, then they asked us, uh, ESPN2 asked us to come back and film a show called Bass Tech. Well, Bass Tech was a Saturday morning TV show um, where they taught how to trick out your boat or how to trick out your rods and reels. So this particular episode was how to uh, teach you how to airbrush crankbaits and repair your guides. Well, at the end of the show, Scott Rook, who's a pro angler, was like, guys, we got a surprise for you. Here's an airbrush with all the paints you need to take it home and paint your own baits. And so my, my fishing partner at the time uh, looked at me and said, I don't want it. I'm not an artist. I took it back to the dorm room, started airbrushing crankbaits. Uh, two years later, I graduated. By the time I graduated, I turned that airbrush into the start of Sixth Sense where I was selling baits on eBay custom painted. When I graduated in 2007, that was the recession, so um, I didn't want to obviously paint baits and smell paint for my entire life. So either it was A, I was going to try to grow it, turn it into a mass production type operation, which I had no experience in. I started this thing, uh, you know, from, the, from my dorm room. I didn't know anything about business. Um, and how to scale up a, a company. So I applied to 50 positions in oil and gas like my family is in, my friends are in here in Houston. It was in the recession, I didn't get an email back, not a phone call back, not an interview, I was over 50. So I was forced to reach out to friends and family to get money, raise money, and then try to grow what I thought at the time was just then named Sixth Sense. And so I rolled the dice, I got money from uh, friends, family, small amounts, I'm talking not much at all here and there to try to get this thing up and going. And one thing led to another to where it is today. And so, uh, so we're a family run business. My mom sits here and makes the jigs. My older brother sits there who was the guy that helped, he was in oil, graduated from A&M and helped uh, fund this company with the little savings he had from day one. So now he sits at the desk next to me. So it's a family run business where we're still trying to scale it. Um, but it's just funny how it all started from one collegiate tournament, which turned it into this. How'd that tournament go, Casey? How did you do in the national championship tournament? I'm just curious, I never heard. We, we got we got lucky and caught a big one. <laughs> so so you, you grew up, you're a hammer on Rayburn, on, on Conroe, on all these lakes. You saw this entrepreneurial dream and you decided that you were going to go this business route and instead of instead of just going and fishing and winning money locally and stuff like that you were going to give that up give up the dream of tournament fishing and everything um so you could start this you could run this and grow this that's 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 a pretty amazing transition from someone that um you would never say but i've heard from so many others that are absolute hammers some of the best sticks in the area in the region have said that uh you were right there with them right there in that, that upper realm of tournament, successful tournament anglers. Well, that was nice of them to say, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so the hardest part is, is when you start running your own business is, is to separate work from pleasure and fishing, because if I didn't stop fishing, I couldn't grow six cents. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had, uh, had two rangers, I was fishing a bunch of tournaments, I was winning a lot of money, but it's either A, stop fishing and sell my boat cold turkey, or B, still fish and try to do that side of it. But, you know, the real passion was in the company and growing it, so I sold my boat, which is a super hard thing to do. How did you get that boat? Your, your parents bought it for you, you said, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was uh, all money hard earned, and it was an old Ranger. And, and you won another boat. I did win another boat, and I actually <laughs> won that boat with my partner. We sold it, and I paid off all my student debt with that boat. It That's was a awesome. Brand new legend. Yeah. Um, so I didn't see a penny of it. It paid off my student loans, which put me, uh, you know, no debt in a good stage in the company. Uh, about, uh, I think a year later, I sold my Ranger. I took the money I got from that, which wasn't a whole lot, plugged it back into six cents. And to this day, I still don't own a boat because all the money still goes back into the company. So let's let's go look at some of your baits you got started with, dude. I want I want to check it out. I know the Crush 50 was that was your first one, right? Um, so yeah, this, this place, first of all, sorry it's a wreck, but we don't stop. Like, we don't stop to clean up, we don't stop for anything. What we show, because some of this stuff is from iCast, all our prototypes that are coming out, all the stuff that we're testing and constantly going and testing. What is this right here? Is this something you're coming up with? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's something my employees, <laughs> if they act up, they get spooked. Yeah. <laughs> old, old stuff, I don't have a whole lot of. Yeah. I do, I don't know where it's at. Like here's the 50x rapid prototype. Here's the movement taped together, which you know it's 
Um, Get everything just right. Yeah, so I mean, you can see in this box how many prototypes. This is the new glide bait, which we're throwing, we're going to be throwing a lot of this week. Um, all the Cloud Nine series, the Curve, the Quakes. I mean, testing tons of different weight variations, all labeled. And you see pink in it. That's so I can see the action in the water, and the mm -hmm. pink's just the brightness of how much it's vibrating. For sure. Um, and so, you know, there's so many rapid prototypes, which these are printed from a printer, and then they're just glued together with super glue, basically, with the weights inside them for testing. And so it's a long, ongoing process of printing these out, testing them, printing them out, testing them, printing them out, and testing them until they get just perfect because you can't make the mold until it's just right. You were like the original guy that sold baits on eBay. You were the dude. I was one of a few, yeah, there yeah. wasn't many of us. Um, and, and it was a cool like start of a custom side. And I think my entry into the, the industry was no one had taken a custom painted bait and put it on a mass market product. Right. Back in the day, you had like three or four colors. It was all built on, let's make them really quickly and make a quick buck. Right. And there wasn't a whole lot of you know design and color and quality I thought that went into a crankbait. So my objective was, okay, my differentiation was to make it look good and put that custom paint job that I did for years onto a mass produced product. Mm -hmm. And so that's uh, that was the, I guess the end goal is to create the company based on that. That's why you guys look at the paint jobs and no one understands why they look as good as they do and you can get them for cheaper. I mean, Mega Bass, Lucky Crap, those companies have come out with good paint jobs for years, but they're 15, 20, 25, 30, 40 dollars a lot of them and now you have them for $6.99, $7.99, $8.99, under $10 price point. That's why a lot of you guys have bought them too. Dude, I've never seen the paint booth. Let's do it. So this is where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. You said you started in a dorm room doing this, this stuff. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to feel like I was still in my dorm room. Yeah. Obviously putting this yeah. in the closet. This is the only space that we had available to paint, but um, you can see that you know, these are a ton of just random new colors that we're working on. I'll paint new colors quite a bit, a lot of which don't make mass production. So this is like the Mag Dog, just a custom cool color right. that we'll try to, you know, sell prior to its release. And a lot of this stuff just never makes it out of the office or online. Like we have just boo coos of cool custom stuff. You may never ever see them in production. New bluegill colors. These aren't finished, there's still more colors. New swim jig head colors here, the design. I don't know so what that one's. So you paint one's... them. So I paint them, yeah. Yeah, um, I can tell because you can't make them look that good without it. That right there, is a fir... you said that's the first building ever on the property over there? Yeah, that one there, and then we bought this one in. That's it, this is the other building that you guys have expanded upon. Yeah, this is uh, this is our newest building. What all? What do we? What do we got going on in here? This is uh, this is mostly case uh, cartons. So this is where our master cartons are held. So when the product runs out in building two, we uh, we refill it. So we keep all our master produced products. So if you were to look in one of these boxes, say some of these are open. So we'd open one. So this is there's some. So this would be C20s and then C15s and then C10s. And so you come this way. We just bought out some old shelving where we're going to put some new apparel on. So we got some old shelving just arrived the other day. We got it organized. These are all rods right here. Yeah, these are all rods. Damn. Yeah. That's a lot of rods. That's a lot of rods. Yeah, so we got our, our, our uh, rod, rod tubes, tubes and everything to ship out. station over here. So we have like speed glides and we have uh, top waters and. Uh, our 50x, our 100x, uh, our 80x movement, and so forth. So it's just lined up, and so we can come in, and grab whatever we need, and refill the uh, the shelf. So what was your first bait like that started this all? Like you, I noticed you painted a lot of like square bells, you painted a lot of jerk baits and stuff blanks when you got started. But what was your first one? Yeah. So the first blank I painted as a square bill. I mean, I used to paint baits. I used to I started out painting everyone else's baits. So I wanted to create my own square bill. That was my ultimate deal, is to create a cool square bill with my custom paint patterns. The problem was, is I couldn't figure out how to get into China. I mean, internet was just getting popular, so there was nowhere to just Google how to find a factory. You just don't find that. So at the time, I was still on eBay, and I was buying some tungsten, and I was repackaging it, reselling it uh, through a tungsten guy in Pennsylvania. So the question I get a lot is, well, how did you get into China? Which is kind of what everyone wants to know. How did you find a factory in China? Well, it's kind of a cool story, because it was karma. I mean, in a sense, because I'm, I'm selling this tungsten on eBay. I'm buying it, I mean, 
30, 40 pieces a quarter. I mean, I'm making like barely enough money to pay my rent and keep my lights on. And uh, so finally, this guy reaches out and says, um, hey, I want to order a bunch of tungsten, like in bulk. Like I'm talking $5,000 worth. So either A, I could have bought $5,000 in tungsten, which is heavy, and had it shipped in and then resold it to him. Well, my bread and butter was the custom lure side. I'm selling through eBay. I really like this guy in Pennsylvania. He was always cool to me. I sold a few other products through him. And uh, so I just gave him a guy in Pennsylvania's email. So I, I, I cut myself out as the middleman and sent that buyer in the West Coast straight over to Pennsylvania to buy the tungsten in bulk. Well, this guy in Pennsylvania ends up making like a good chunk of change from this deal. I mean, quite a bit. So the guy in Pennsylvania calls me. His name's Craig, really good guy. And calls me and says, Casey, why did you do that? I really appreciate you sending me that business. Why didn't you make a mark and, and do it? I said, it wasn't a big deal, man. I, I like you. You've helped me out. It wasn't a big deal. It was just an easier transaction for me. Just had him buy direct. So well, how can I help you in return? Well, Craig was buying through China. So I thought, well, Craig, if you really want to help me out, he's like, I do. He said, well, I said, well, get me into China. I want to start a company, mass production, in China. I have no idea how to do it. I can custom paint a lure, but how do I get that onto a, uh, my own bait in China? He said, I got a fact. And so that was kind of the start of my, I guess, learning process. I didn't, knew nothing how to deal with, you know, any of these factories in China, how to deal with business and pricing. So I started working this factory that he recommended. And uh, one thing led to another, I had my first prototype. I drew it all up. I worked with rapid prototypes. We make the mold. What bait was that? That was that was the 50X. It was, right. It was the start of the 50X. It actually was different. The first one had tungsten integrated into it, so it was a little more expensive from a price point. Um, well, after you know a month or so, getting them in, custom painting them, all the bills are breaking, and they're leaking water, and I'm running into issues. So here I am, I invested my whole life savings into this first mold, which the mold is super expensive to create. So I invested all my money, I have a bad product. At the time, there was really only one company making a good quality square bill, and it was $14.99. So that was my, I thought, opportunity in the market. And I, and I still look back and think, had I succeeded on that first mold, I think I would be 10 times the size I am now. Um, because that, that square wheel market took off and you hear 1.5 everywhere now. And ours was the 50X, but at the time, square bill's a big deal. And I knew the opportunity market to, to try to come in with something at a good price point. So I tanked. I lost everything. And uh, Craig comes back and said, well, how'd it go? I said, it didn't go good, Craig. He, he said, why? You know, and he was super cool. He tried to pay for all my losses. I didn't take any of it. He was such a good guy, but he said, I got one more factory. I got one more factory that I found I think you should try. I don't know their quality, but you should try them. And that was all I had. I had one other lead. So I reached out to them, started with that factory, and that's where we're at today. From that one experience, it was a cool you know, story how it went from a simple karma transaction. You do something for someone just, to, I guess, to be nice and, and help someone else out because they were always good in business with you. And then it you know, transpired into A, a loss, but then also B, where we're at today. So, um, which is kind of cool. That was the story of how I got to China from the 50X, which was my first commercial model. So you start with the 50X. So what, what you launched more than one bait, obviously, when you started the company, kind of got into mass production. What what baits have transpired? Where, where are you at today with numbers on everything? Like, what, how many baits do you have now? Oh, wow. I mean, we... We've come out with so much product now that I'm just, my job is kind of the creative development side, dealing with the factories and dealing with whoever we're dealing with to create product and get it here in house. And I think now we're at almost 1800 SKUs. So a SKU is like one single product of a model and a color. So I think we have almost 25 molds and lures now, maybe 30. Um, and we have, you know, Buku's obviously of colors. Um, so it's quite a bit, so it's a lot to juggle and we got almost 30 to 40 more in the works, in the pipeline. I don't know when they'll come out, when they'll be released, but we're constantly creating a new product. Um, so it's just, it's a lot. I remember that one of the questions I asked you, and I'll always remember the first couple times that I was down here, but you, I asked you, what bait is it that, that gets more bites that doesn't have necessarily the run that all the other baits have? And you told me the flat 75, it kept, hands down catches so many giant fish. And people aren't talking about it. People aren't necessarily buying it like they should be, mm -hmm. but 
yeah, it's, it's still, I still stick to my guns on that. If I'm cranking rock or a dock or anything that's a little bit deeper, which it's, it's a fine line between deeper, I'm talking four to five foot, um, the flat 75X just gets a bit. But when you're talking from two to four, the 50X, and when you're talking one to three, the movement 80X. And if I was to go to any given lake, I think the movement has been the biggest sleeper because there's not anything like it. So I'll, I'll not backtrack, but I still stick to the, the 75X from like a, a tournament standpoint or a boat standpoint, from a bank standpoint, the movement, because you know a lot of your followers, I think are fishing with the bank, hadn't made it to a boat. But even, even in a boat for me, like my last event was on a Rayburn in February and I was chunking the movement everywhere over grass. Um, so it's hard, like I, I constantly shift on that. That's a cool story. The first time I ever tested the 75X, I had uh, the 250 ND, and I had the 75X, and that was there were two prototypes. And so the first day, I got them in the mail at the same time, and I called up my buddy and I said, "Hey, man, we gotta go test out some baits." So I went to Conroe, and Conroe can be hit or miss, but it's not something you really smoke fish on on a given day. But the first cast I made is a true story. With the 75X, I caught a seven pounder, mm. and it was on something that was like community hole, like wasn't much to it, but chunked it out the first cast, seven pounder, and like. The guy next to me was on the 250, oh, maybe 10th cast, he caught one about five. And so it's a confidence builder, you know, that they work. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that was just like instantaneous. And so it's uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a cool thing when you're testing a product that you spend a lot of time to develop. And the mold's made, you finally gotta go stick it to the test because if we don't catch anything, it's a bust. So the cool thing is too, like he's talking about prototype development, prototype testing, we actually have some new things that have never been released or never been talked about with Six Sense Lures. There's a soft plastic design, designs coming, a whole line of soft plastics. And you guys ask me that all the time. On my videos, you know, they, you say you got six cents hard baits and you were asking me all the time when I start my channel, like when are they coming out with rods? Like rods would be sweet. Talking about the rod series, we got rods coming out. We got several series of rods coming out. Uh, may, maybe even uh, MF or series, potentially, maybe coming out as well. But prototype testing and development it is amazing it's cool you get to try brand new things and we actually get to try some new six cents plastic six cents plastic baits that's something else you guys have been asking about for so long you said you know that they have the most refined best working hard baits you guys so many of you have gone out and bought them uh, and you guys have known i get pictures i get messages literally probably dozens of them every single day about fish you caught on the six cents lure so that's why one thing it's so cool for me to be here right now talking to the the guy who started all who still runs it all uh, from the ground up but we're actually the, the next few days we're gonna be throwing some soft plastics for the very 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 first time so this was like the first time anyone's ever seen anything from six cents lure like no one's ever seen the factory or anything yeah especially from a camera's perspective that, dude, that's so sick that you guys got to go along with that. But I know, uh, like, I, I appreciate you valuing the MF for Nation and everything we've done to 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 go try six sensors. I was just telling Casey, it's so cool to see somebody that I you got tournament guys that you know buy a bunch of this stuff and everything. But it's so cool to see an audience that has never a lot of a lot of people getting into fish. A lot of you never fished before are going out and, and buying these products right here from this dude that start from the ground up and you're catching fish and you're getting into fishing because of these lures. So that's so cool from my perspective to see that. Like it's, I, I, it's, it's the best thing. Absolutely. If I could chime in, you know, it's, it's something that we really appreciate you guys that are supporting us as, you know, family run business and, and that we've always started in the tournament industry, but um, to work with Ben before he even started his channel, this isn't something that we reached out when he had his channel. Ben and I were friends before he started YouTube. He was calling me going, dude, I should quit my job and start YouTube. And so to, to have him push the product, I'm gonna give him props, is, is you guys follow him, but as a person, you don't realize how good of a guy he is. And so I'm gonna put him on the spot and, and to thank not only Ben uh, for what he's done, but to thank you guys for the support. And if it's, it's just a cool, uh, uh, thing how it happened that we became buddies that we both fished and that you know we worked together and then he starts a YouTube channel he starts pushing our product and here we are today you know five years later almost um, to have you guys supporting us because y'all you know trust Ben and you're trusting the right guy because it's just been a cool camaraderie of a network to where we've gotten um, thanks to this guy and thanks to y'all support 
um, because we couldn't have done it without Ben, but we can't do it without you guys too. So thank you all for the support and the purchases and following Ben's channel because it's a special thing for, for what we have going. So it's, uh, it's, it's nice to have you guys. Thanks so much, guys. And uh, without further ado, I suppose we we better get out of here. We got to go do some fishing. We got to catch some fish. You got any predictions? Yeah. And, and yeah, something else, I know we're on camera, but yeah, I got a prediction that um, I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> I hadn't fished. This is a true story. I hadn't fished since the last Costa event, okay? Uh, uh, but I'm going to kick his ass. Happen. He fishes every day. I can't let I'm that I'm going to catch a big one, <laughs> maybe two, but we're going to new water too. I, I think we're going to a river system that I think we can catch some fish at. Um, and then we're going to uh, possibly a few other bodies of water that I've never fished. So it's fair game. This is True. equal opportunity. We're, we're exploring. It's going to be a fun couple days. We're, we're not going to like the biggest name fisheries in the country or the, the state or the region or anything. We're going to go try some new stuff. We're going we're gonna to test some new baits you guys are going to want to see. And uh, I cannot be more jacked for this experience. You guys are going to want to watch this, but uh, I'll catch you guys very soon. Be checking back from the coming days, either tomorrow or the day after that. I will not give you a two-day break. I don't do two-day breaks. Uh, so be checking for those videos for me. For the man, the myth, the legend, Six Sense Lures, I'm out of here. Peace! I'm not sorry, I can't help this love like mine. <laughs> I'm not sorry, I can't stop with a love like mine.